Today on CityCast Pittsburgh, if you're trying to explore Pittsburgh's steep but walkable neighborhoods, the city steps are a great way to do that. They might look a little worn right now, but the city just got $7 million to start repairs on some of the stairways lining our hills. So we're bringing back this episode with our City Steps tour guide and historian, Laura Zawalski, a.k.a. Miss Steps, on why the stairs are still an important form of transportation for Pittsburghers. It's Wednesday, February 8th. I'm Morgan Moody, and here's what Pittsburgh is talking about. Can you describe where we are right now? Oh, yeah. So right now we're uh, in Troy Hill. We're at the top of the Basin Street Stairs. We're at the section that uh, goes by a number of orphan houses. Those are houses that we have here in Pittsburgh that only have access to them by the city steps. Oh. So we're about to walk down this section of Basin Street. We're going to see some orphan houses. And then we're going to go and sit at this really beautiful overlook that's right off of the stairs where we're going to look out over the Heinz 57 stacks. We're going to look out over the bridges, the Allegheny River, and uh, uh, be amazed by the beautiful landscape that's in front of us. Well, you are Miss Steps, so I trust you. (laughs) It's funny, I never knew there was a name for um, these style of houses, but I do find that it's the most like asked about thing that I get from people that aren't from Pittsburgh. They think it's very weird that people live like in these little hillsides. Pittsburgh, in terms of urban areas, has some of the steepest and most significant changes in elevation uh, anywhere in the United States out of uh, urban areas. You know, of course, there are, you know, the, the Rocky Mountains and right. all of that. Like Denver, um, yeah. But these, the real uh, significant changes in elevation is what prompted private industry initially and then the city and municipal governments in later years to build uh, this kind of infrastructure to build a city steps because you needed to get people who lived up on the hillsides, these very steep hillsides, down to all of the industry and all of the, uh, you know, employment and everything that often was down along the rivers. We should also mention that the steps are old. So, and Pittsburgh has this uh, thing for very narrow (laughs) <laughs> Very thin steps like these right here. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is interesting. So this little spot that we're at right now, we've just gone down the first half of Basin Street, which is the public right of way. But as you look over to the side, you will see these like smaller little flights of stairs. And those are the flights that oh, went out. There's oh, a dog we got who barking has dog. come down the hill and has <laughs> taken interest. Yeah, like, I want to go for a walk too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Uh, So these little flights here, um, some of them you will see go to houses that you can see, and some of the stairs uh, go into an empty hillside, and that is the indication that at one time there was a house there. Uh, Pittsburgh, as you may or may not know, is one of the most significantly depopulated uh, urban cities uh, in Appalachia and in the United States. Um, At the height of the population boom, Pittsburgh had, within city limits, mind you, not the county, city limits, uh, had in excess of 700,000 people. And now, based on latest census data, we have just about 300,000. So we have to keep that in mind when we're walking around and we're looking um, at the hillsides and we're looking at like why things look the way they are, why things are so green, uh, why are there these little stairs that go nowhere? It's because at one time there was something there. So Pittsburgh's known as the city of bridges, but that's like not exactly true because we don't have the most bridges in the world and not even in the country but we could be the city of, of steps because we have so many so why does pittsburgh have so many sets of steps so the whole thing with with the city of steps and why we have so many of them is you know for that reason that i, I just mentioned it's like okay we had seven hundred thousand people and the majority of stairs you know that we that we see they weren't all built like all at once yeah. you know this is something that happened over many decades you know the last few decades of the 1800s many of those were built by the private industry that lined the river so we see a lot of those in like the south side slope 
Slopes area and also the Oakland area because that is where in the late 1800s all of the industry, the new burgeoning industries were located. So it was like steel and iron and glass. So there had to be a way to get people down down the hill. This is a time before people had, and not everybody had cars. No, that was cars a luxury. didn't even exist yet, you yeah. know? And it's like we had trolleys, you know, we had horse-drawn trolleys. But the thing that's really important to remember because I, like the stairs really were the first mass transportation system that the city had and some people do say like oh well but you know we had trolleys you know trolleys existed back then but what's important to know is that the trolleys weren't free right you had to pay money whether it was a horse-drawn trolley or the electrified trolleys that came later on and that is something that when you consider how significant the immigrant and new arrival population was here in Pittsburgh for a number of decades that was something that many people simply did not have the money for. So when I use the term mass transportation, I like to think of it as transportation for the masses. For a lot of people, the stairs really was what got them around. So like, for example, here we are in Troy Hill. Spring Garden is directly on the other side of the hill from us here. And Spring Garden Avenue was a leading commercial corridor, um, you know, dating back to like, you know, Civil War era. Mm -hmm. um, it was a, a place where there was a lot of tanneries, uh, butchers, anything that had to do with kind of like animal production, right? And so there was so much work opportunity along Spring Garden Avenue. But it's like, okay, it's down in the valley and there's a big hill that kind of surrounds it from here in Troy Hill. So, you know, people like, okay, you need to be able to get down there. Yeah. So this is why, like how over time, you know, it went from, uh, you know, maybe like a dozen uh, wooden stairs in Oakland and Southside Slopes that were leading to like the real heavy industries along, along the Mon to where we are now, which is like over 900, and in just about every single neighborhood. My upstairs neighbor just installed a basketball hoop in his living room. So it's time for me to start looking into buying a home. That's why I recommend checking out the How to Buy a Home podcast. Before I listened to the podcast, I didn't even know what questions I had. Now I'm starting to make real plans. Host David Sidoni has years of experience helping first-time home buyers close on houses they thought were impossible. His How to Buy a Home podcast is a free resource that breaks down what you need to know to make buying a home a reality. Like, will your mortgage be more than your current rent? David can guide you through the next steps that are right for you. Start listening to How to Buy a Home podcast today at howtobuyahome.com or wherever you listen to podcasts. Have questions? Ask David directly at howtobuyahome.com. Visit howtobuyahome.com and make this the last year that you rent. These people had to have, in the 1800s, had to have been in such good shape. Their calves must have looked Oh, amazing yeah. going yeah, up and yeah. down these stairs well, everywhere th there's often like you know even like 1800s but even like you know going up through the 1950s right of like okay working class people that lived within city limits you know they walked to work every day you know and then they were also working these really like physically demanding jobs um, but even if you weren't a steel worker um, you know if you were say you know like 1920s you know woman who lived in Troy Hill who was working down at Heinz you know Heinz employed more than 50% of their working staff was female. And so, you know, you were going on the stairs all the time, whether you were going on them for work, right. uh, you were doing, going to do your shopping, you know, doing your errands, going to your house of worship. So it's often one of these things that I think about, like the ancestors of Pittsburgh would laugh at us today of like, you know, when COVID hit and the gyms were closed and all of a sudden it's like, oh, I'm going to get out so out of shape because I can't go do my cardio stairmaster <laughs> at the gym or <laughs> whatever it is. It's like, well, no, like you got all these city steps yeah. that are all around you. And I'm like, this is why, you know, it was a very different, a very different kind of life back then. And you so. talked about the stairs that are in like Oakland and yeah. Southside, those being some of the oldest. Are there any original stairs? Because they look, ah, well, they well, look pretty original. I know. <laughs> well, see, this is the thing. So the original, like the Old Testament original stairs were made out of wood. And, you know, when you think about things from the 1800s, all of that is long gone. 
gone. And part of the reason why it's also long gone is that our built landscape has changed considerably since like, you know, the 1880s, the 1890s. The stairs that we see now, um, I guess I, I would call them like stairs 2.0, like Basin Street here that we've walked on, these were constructed right after World War II. And so what you see now, what you see in terms of this concrete, the, the concrete aggregate that's used in many of the stairs, the style of the steel for the railings, all of this was put into place between the late 1940s and the early 1950s. And then, and of course, you know, concrete and steel, it's designed to last a good 70 or 80 years. It's very good construction. It's, it's hitting its... It's hitting its... It's hitting its, hitting it's, its ex expiration date. Life. It's yeah. expiration date. That's a great way to put it. Because what ended up happening, you know, Pittsburgh lost so much of that population. Just as we were starting to reach that point when um, maintenance should have been done. And so these were things that for a long period of time actually coming up to like very recent times people had just thought ah like leave them be nobody uses them anyway just let them they'll crumble they'll fall apart it gets all overgrown nobody cares anymore up until I want to say maybe like the last five to six years when there really became a renewed em em uh, emphasis on you know having you know green transportation trying to keep people from using their vehicles as frequently um, and much like the bike lanes um, the city steps also you know play a big role in that and you clearly know a lot about these stairs, about Pittsburgh. I mean, it's you, been like getting a PhD in yeah. city steps. If, if, you, if you learned, if you learned one bit of information per sets of stairs yeah. that you've climbed in the city, I could see why yeah. you'd now be like this, there's you know, so, wealth of knowledge. So much. All of these neighborhoods have had so much happen, so much, you know, joy and happiness and so much trauma. And all of that is infused in the landscape. All of that is infused because the people that had that joy and had that sadness, they were walking up and down these stairs, you know, hundreds, hundreds of thousands of people. Yeah. And all of that, all of that, I believe is like, that's, that's a part of the land. That's a part of the city that we all live in. So for me as a creative person, capturing all of that and then putting that out there and giving it to people to say like, you know, think about this. And then, you know, you go out and you have your experience. That's what I love to share with people, you know, through my words, through my tours, through my writing, you know, it's like, it's like a love letter to the city. Laura, thank you so much for showing us parts of the city that we didn't know about. It was wonderful. Laura Zawowski is Miss Steps, 739 flights of city steps and counting. You can find Laura's art and writing on her website, mis-steps.com, where you can also book one of her step tours. You can also find her on her Instagram account where she has so many very cool pictures of all the step tours. It's at mis.steps. A little more news before you go. Two environmental groups are preparing to sue Shell over its new plastics plant in Beaver County. The Environmental Integrity Project and Clean Air Council say since activity started ramping up at the plant last fall, it's already violated air pollution limits. We did a whole episode about this plant last year before they started full production. We'll drop a link in our show notes. And police say the man accused of killing one McKeesport police officer and injuring another was experiencing a mental health crisis. The man's mother called 911 to report he was having a PTSD episode, according to a criminal complaint. Radio dispatcher said the suspect was a military veteran. He now faces a number of charges, including homicide. That's all for today here on CityCast Pittsburgh. If you enjoyed the show, tell your friends, rate the show, leave us a review, and subscribe to our Hey Pittsburgh newsletter. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city, so we'll see you then. Are you looking at that um, spotted? <laughs> We got. Where is it? We gotta. We gotta do a little killing here. We're out. We're out here. Doing, I don't know if it's God's work. It flew away, so it it, it lives for. It a lives few more for moments. a few more minutes. Yeah. When we're done, we're gonna hunt you down.